Joining me on the line, he is from CinemaBelin.com. You can find him on social media at Mr. Controversy 83 Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Michael Reyes. Hey, Mike, what's up? How are you? Oh, no, no. That's great. Um, but that's what I'm doing. A- <laughs> wow. Yes, it's going to be that sort of week. Okay, fine. You know, I mean, apparently we still have a show, but, you know. We you never like did that. not have a show, okay? We ran into some technical background issues that we're not going to talk about, and it completely ruined my Friday last week. So, anywho. Yeah, well, you know, I was about to tell you, I'm looking at a Godzilla versus Kong coloring book right now, and then you're all of a sudden just like, yeah, sure, fine, ruining the buzz. So. Yeah, because yeah, I had buddy. all of that planned. For the people in the background, we're not going to talk about it. Any- <laughs> no, because we got stuff to do, exactly. and it's awesome. Exactly. Mike Reyes joining me on the line to talk about movies this week. Uh, Okay, so let's start with this. You didn't have a chance to see it last week, but you did see it uh, this week. We finally got Coming to America 2. Now, before you tell me what you think of it, I want to say that it looked good in the trailer, but the whole the movie as a whole is not very good. Am I close? Oh, yeah. No, the trailer did look good. And the one thing that held up from the trailer is the fact that Wesley Snipes is having so much fun in this movie. <laughs> like, when Wesley Snipes has fun in a movie, you get something like the first two Blade movies, or yep. you get, like, Demolition Man. When Wesley Snipes is not having fun in a movie, you get Blade Trinity. Yeah, exactly. So... All right. Those are legendary stories. Uh, Pat and Oswald, come on the show and tell your stories. Yeah, really, right? So coming to America 2, the... Honestly, I don't even know if we really needed a sequel to this movie because it was so well done the first time. What reason? I, I okay, I know the reason why he goes back to Queens, but I mean, it just seems so convoluted and like, hey, let's just... Let's go back and revisit jokes that were made 30 years ago or whatever. Literally down to the usage... Bringing back characters from, bringing back the exact actors from 30 years ago and bringing back footage. Like there are two huge moments of of reusing the footage from coming to America in this movie. I felt like it was a a, a clip show. And what's even more damning about that fact is Kenya Barris helped co-write write this movie. And that's strike two for him on uh, legendary reboots that do not work because he also wrote the Shaft reboot. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this felt almost like, you know, this is a pilot for a new coming to America show. And also, I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of I – I don't care if you put a two in the title. I am a literal number two. I am sick and tired of sequels that cannot be bothered to come up with some sort of name, like The Thing, the prequel, The Thing, the remake, uh, and then coming to America. It's like, great, that's not going to – be confusing when you're talking about a movie on on the radio. It's like, we watched Coming to America this week. Well, what the hell's wrong with you? That's been lying out there for like 30 years. No, 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 Coming to America. Look, you emphasize the wrong word and just, no. All right. But going back waste. to it, if, if I remember right, you hadn't seen Coming to America. I haven't seen it all the way through. I saw bits and pieces of it because my father loves that movie. Okay. And you know, I remember him watching it back in the day. And, you know, of course, certain bits – recur over time like you know uh uh the sexual chocolate or the barber sh- the barber shop okay the one, the one thing other thing that holds up in this movie is the barber shop oh. because watching arsenio hall and eddie murphy switch between personas and just the rapid fire of those jokes that get dropped i i don't want to tempt fate but if you were really going to do another coming to america maybe you should have just done a barber shop movie oh boy but the original one was is one of the best Eddie Murphy movies, I think. It is. It's. It, I mean, it's classic for a reason. And the bits that I mean, the fact that I haven't seen the whole thing all the way through, or at least if I did, it's been years. There's stuff that just holds up, and this movie understands that, but it understands it too well to the point where it's like, here's the stuff that held up. Yeah. And the new stuff is so confusing, like. Do we need the love child in Brooklyn story at the same time as he has these three daughters and the oldest daughter wants to be in succession and wants things to change? Like you could use one of those stories, one of them, both of them together kind of just didn't make sense because it's butting heads. It's like, okay, do you want to be about getting to know this son and and, and get, making him part of the family? Or do you want to be about the family that you've had and the family that's established and, the, and, you know, changing things from modern times. See, that's where I think the sequel could have been done really, really well, 
is take the whole love child thing out of this. And sorry, spoilers, everybody, if you haven't seen this movie yet. That, that's in the trailers. But if you would take his, his oldest daughter who wants to rule, and maybe that's all she's thinking about. If he comes to her as a father and say, listen, one of the best things that ever happened to me was going to Queens just to live life a little bit. I want you to do this same thing. Yeah. And maybe if you want to keep that, that plot line still in there. Like if you want to keep the love child in there, that's your twist. She meets this guy. She kind of falls from, it looks like it's coming to America one again. And then it's like, Oh wait, you're my son. This is a problem. And then you introduce that as like a third act complication instead of a whole plot line that's supposed to go beside this plot line of, of the Royal family. That's already there. Yeah. So, all right. So coming to America to, or coming to America, whatever the hell you want to call it. Not very yeah. good. It's disappointing, but I still like seeing Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall doing their thing again. Some of the cameos are really cool. Uh, the Trading Places reference is still Is it in really there still? Cool the, but, well, because uh, I think it was, I don't, I think it was Colin Yost from uh, Saturday Night Live. That's the, one of the uh, interviews that his son in uh, Queens goes on. The, he go interviews with Duke and Duke. Really? Yeah. That's funny because uh, a lot of people didn't know those universes were connected. And I was going to say in the in the original, don't yeah. you see the, the brothers begging? Yeah. No, they're bums, and uh, uh, Eddie Murphy as uh, Prince Akeem goes up and hands them the money, and they're like, "Oh my God, we're back!" So, which goes back to Trading Places with Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd, which. God, that could be one of the best movies of all time. Uh, that's a, that's another one that uh, that is is basically one of the the family pillars that my father just he loves that movie for the comedy and also he just has the biggest crush on Jamie Lee Curtis. So oh, it's God. like a list for him. What's funny is uh, I stumbled across Trading Places the other day and it's just it's such a good movie and it's so well done and it's so funny and it's just, and that's eddie murphy like at the beginning yeah it, it really is those uh, early days, he's just white hot and just yeah uh, awesome you change your, uh, those days you changed your movie around him because you didn't know where he was gonna go but wherever he was going was on fire yeah exactly uh mike reyes from cinemablend.com joining me to talk about movies uh going to the movie that comes out this week you have not seen uh netflix movie uh Yes day. yes day yes day what's this about it is about a family that decides to say yes to everything their kids ask them to do for one day so take yes man but it was actually a kid's book that was already written and you've got jennifer garner and edgar ramirez playing the parents who have to say yes to everything their kids say so dressing like you know superheroes or dressing a tutu you gotta say yes going through the car wash with the windows down that's a yes, and I hope you didn't get hot wax. Doing an alias reunion. Well, actually, that's something Jennifer Garner says she wants to do, and I wish her kids would have asked her to do that because then, you know, we have an alias reunion. Okay, so what are you hear? Are you hearing it's good? It sounds dumb, but uh, I, you know, what I really don't know what to think of the prospect just because on one hand you saw Jim Carrey do this in Yes Man, and it was it was okay, but on the other hand. I, I, it, it's, it sounds like another one of those family comedies is just a little yeah. too yay. It's sitting at a 39% on Rotten Tomatoes, but that's only 18 reviews. Yeah. And you know, that, that I, I don't know how that's going to change after more of them pour in, but there's like very little, to say. like literally one review. Well, we haven't seen <laughs> Jennifer Gardner in a lot of things lately. Have we? She's been in, uh, on and off lately. I'm trying to remember what else she's, she's been as of late. But I know she's she's coming back in force because she's got another movie, another couple movies for Netflix. And uh, one of them is a book by the same author that did Yes Day, and it's about like a body swap between a mother and her daughter. So another Freaky Friday situation. Yeah. And then she's going to be in Ryan Reynolds' next uh, Netflix movie, The Adam Project. Man travels yeah, back she, in time to get help from his younger self to confront their late father. His father is Mark Ruffalo and his mother is Jennifer Garner. So now we technically have a 13 going on 30 reunion going on here. Which, by the way, oh, oddly oh, fun oh, movie. It is a fun movie. I really like 13 going on 30. Any movie that gives me Andy Serkis doing the thriller is a movie that I'll sit <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, she played a small role in Wonder Park. She did Peppermint a couple of years ago. She did Love Simon. And a ton of commercials. Oh yeah, she was doing Capital One commercials. Yep, yep, yep. So I like Jennifer Garner. I do too. Like she's just one of those people that's always been bright and upbeat, but she's not annoying about it. Like she's just generally yeah. a positive person. You can't help but be positive around her. And well, that... again, she still like the the legacy of Alias lives on, and she just kicked all sorts of ass and was fantastic on that show. Hear me out on this. An interesting reboot could be her coming back and doing something with Electra. I wouldn't be against that. I mean, I never saw Electra, but I, I did. Oh. I, I heard the reviews. <laughs> but it would be inter- It'd be interesting to see her go back to Marvel. And it's funny because that's a it's something that uh, what's it? We were just talking about it. Ryan Reynolds. That was something Ryan Reynolds mentioned. And uh, like he he put up a post for the Adam Project where it's like, yeah, we finished our movie four days. In adv- ahead of schedule and then he just mentions like Gamora the Hulk Elektra and it's like literally he has Zoe Saldana Mark yeah. Ruffalo and Jeff Garner in his movie with him and then he's like and then the kid that'll replace me as Deadpool when I crawl into a box and become a skeleton <laughs> I just Ryan uh, Reynolds, come on our show. I know I'd love to talk I would yeah, yeah Ryan Reynolds would be great but no I'm going back still to- waiting to get to talk to that man uh I, I don't want to go too far off of uh the road here but Electra Electra Daredevil like it was just people that didn't get it that made those movies you know mm-hmm. and it was the last days of Marvel where it's like oh wow Spider-Man first of all comic book movies were out of favor at that point and just coming back yeah. and then it was like wow Spider-Man and, and X-Men are making money at the movies we need every marvel property we have up there and that was at that time where marvel just basically late 80s early 90s was like how much money you got yeah congratulations you've got namor the super mariner which is still sitting at universal part of me want you know what there's part of me that wants to go back and watch daredevil and electra because i mean if you think about it both those movies were made like especially daredevil it was made to be a darker take on it was more kind of that tim burton road of dark comic book oh yeah hero. very much dark comic book mid-aughts dude bro evanescence on the soundtrack era of films yeah so part of me is interested to go back and rewatch it i don't know yeah i i kind of want to go back and watch that and watch uh electra as well like i i kind of want to just go back and see all of the throw the spaghetti against the wall marvel movies yeah. they made like you know remember ghost rider I didn't, you know what's crazy? Like the two Ghost Rider movies? I don't hate either one of them. I never saw the second one, but that first Ghost Rider was cool. Nick Cage was cool. The second Peter one. Fonda as the devil. The second one is absolutely insane. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah. It's Neville Dean Taylor. Of course it is. It, it's absolutely bonkers, but I didn't hate it. The uh, Ghost Rider peeing fire was kind of funny to me absolutely bonkers is the bare minimum for the guys who directed crank oh crank god <laughs> yeah crank, crank, but no, crank seriously awesome. i mean i i don't i don't love ghost rider or uh the the second spirit of vengeance i think it was called but yeah. if it comes on i'm not saying i won't sit through the whole damn thing and watch it i did i will say this i like their version of ghost rider like how they portrayed it like uh in, in the second one far better better than the first one because it was a little bit more spooky paranormal kind of weird than yeah. uh just uh oh you know guy with a head on fire anyways we're we're going way down a bad path here mike Reyes from cinemablend.com joining me on it's the live never a bad path when nick cage leads the way uh moving on over to uh the world of movie news um not a ton to get to this week but there is more justice league <laughs> You make it sound like that's a bad thing. It's just like we were talking about before we we started recording today. If if we went back, I wonder at what point did it seem like Justice League started taking over, where there was at least one story a week about Justice League? Uh, Probably 2019, uh, when they had the huge anniversary, like the two-year anniversary where a lot of the stars like Ben Affleck and yeah. Affleck Gatt, decided to come out and, and support the release the Snyder Cut movement. I mean, it's always kind of been out there, but that was the big newsmaker. And then months later, it's like, wait, there were talks around then and congratulations, we've got that, that movie's coming. I, so I would say, yeah, that's, that's exactly the moment. And shameless plug, if you want to learn more, read Sean O'Connell's release the Snyder Cut. 
I need to uh, I need to get with him to do an interview. I it's been uh, yeah. Yeah, I like literally. You say the like, literally. I will put the. We'll talk about this off. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, anyways, what's the Justice League news? Yeah, that's this basically week? when it started. Well, that's when it started taking over. But the recent news is, um, some people logged on to HBO Max. I don't know why they did this. I haven't even watched it yet, but I'll 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 do it because it's on HBO Max. Uh, some people logged on to watch Tom and Jerry this week, and instead of getting Tom and Jerry. They got Zack Snyder's Justice League. Like the full like, thing? They got to course, watch everything? Yeah. Well, I don't know if they got to watch the full thing, but they definitely got to watch a good piece of it. Screenshots popped up on Twitter, and this movie isn't supposed to come out until next week. But this was I, – I think this was even before they released the the preview link to the press because there's been interviews conducted this week. Huh. Because I did see that they uh, – that there was new footage of Cyborg. And that's how I kind of yeah. Well, their big push has been they've been releasing like a teaser trailer and a poster. I think every day for like a steady clip. And that day was I think supposed to be Cyborg's day. It was either that or Wonder Woman. I forget who. But literally, I'm I'm ready to get off uh, of shift that day. And then all of a sudden, everyone or, or it was close to the end of my shift. And then someone's like. Yeah, so this is happening, and everybody's logging onto their HBO Max accounts at that point. They're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, can we get this? And it's like, throughout the room, it's like, nope, Tom and Jerry here. Nope, nope. Uh, it's like, wow, how did this happen to these people? Yeah, I mean, it's weird. good for us for them. Yeah. And, you know, they this, this is going to be a, a – this is their big moment next week, and they, they it want next, it to Yeah, it is them. next week, isn't it, that it comes out? Next Thursday. Okay. Yep. Um, four hours, kids, four hours and, like, one minute. I think so random random justice league thought I was uh, looking at some of the pictures cause they've been having the stuff about dark side and all this, you know, and I got to yeah. looking at the picture of Steppenwolf, like the Zack Snyder version of Steppenwolf spiky boy. And I'm just looking at him like, God, that would suck being that dude because you would just be getting caught on everything. You would not be able to get close to people or objects or garments because you would tear them. <laughs> Like it just looks a very hard time doing any sort of manual labor or any sort of personal hygienic upkeep unless you took the suit off. And that's probably going to be a four hour, one minute process itself. Exactly. I'm just looking at this thing and I'm like, that thing is just so unpractical, even even by alien standards. Like I can't see an alien in an advanced technology, you know, a r realm of advanced technology going, hey, this is a great idea. <laughs> well, maybe that's why he's Steppenwolf and we aren't. Maybe, possibly. But I just, at the end of the day, you'd be like, God, I am just sick of getting caught on every single garment that I walk past. Chafing was the least of my worries and polishing. But no, everything I touch bleeds. Steppenwolf walking through a crowded room is just a massacre. You got to think that Steppenwolf, this version of Steppenwolf, he, like uh, they've got a big meeting with Darkseid or something. They got everybody coming in and he walks in late and it's a huge crowded room and he just goes. <sighs> <laughs> like at the end of the day, he has He's to have the thought of in the blood of everyone that was like next to him. Like at some point he has to look down at the suit and go, it's not worth it. I don't care how cool it is. It's impractical and it's not worth it. But at the same time. Steppenwolf can be used as a poster board for social distancing. There you go. You know what? That's where we're going to leave it this week. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Mike Reyes. He's got a uh, ah. zinger to end the show this week. Yay. Yay. Hey, happy anniversary to you and your uh, wife. Number three, ah, right? Thank you. Yes. Yes. The big third. She hasn't killed me. And, uh, you know, it's good. It's very good. It's all downhill from here, buddy. All right, that's going to do it for us this week. Mike Reyes from CinemaBlend.com joins me every week to talk about movies. Mike, have a great weekend. You too, man.